so uh, you will make um, uh, you would then want to count not just not how many pages point to your web page but how many pages that themselves are pointed at by lots of uh, uh, other uh, web pages how many of them point to your web page right so here is your uh, web page so rather than having uh, counting uh, things uh, like that you would actually count only things that uh, look like this Right, so you you call a web page important not if it's pointed at by many web pages, but if it's pointed by many web pages that they themselves are pointed at by many other web pages. Can you rig this system? How would you rig this if Page rank in the. Well, could like make a cycle or something like that, and then get them all like completely right. Exactly. So nothing stops you from uh, creating web pages that point out to your web page, but they also point a lot uh, among themselves. Right? So obviously, Page rank, this wouldn't solve the problem. So that's actually the main um, trick uh, that page rank solved. Uh, page rank is not only informative, but it is extremely robust uh, against manipulation. What do you think? What feature would be enough to guarantee robustness? You see, this feature should not depend. You know, the number of web pages in, on internet is absolutely humongous, right? It's billions and billions, and probably now hundreds of billions of web pages, right? In order to, uh, and any attacker can have access to a ridiculously small fraction of these web pages. You might uh, design bogus, uh, automatically design bogus web pages, but how many can you design compared to uh, hundreds of billions of the pages outside? So, in order for an for a ranking algorithm to be robust, it has to be such that it does not depend, essentially, the rank of a web page should not depend on the ranks of small number of other web pages. Namely, page rank must be global in the sense that changing page rank of any web page will disturb ranks of all other pages. Right? Because if you achieve that, right, if your ranking system is not localizable, so if it's not possible to change the rank of a web page by manipulating a small subset of the entire internet, then you got the right solution because no attacker can uh, uh, fiddle with a large portion of web pages. Uh, do you understand what I mean, right? So page rank has to be truly well, uh, derived from the global features of uh, uh, of uh, 
of the structure, link structure of internet, right? So let's see um, then what would be a step in that direction. One might say, okay, this is my web page and I want to uh, look at its rank P. Uh, its rank should depend on the ranks of the pages P1, P2, up to say Pn uh, that point to this web page. In what way? Well, in such a way that if the ranks of these web pages are high, then the rank of P will be also high. Right? But uh, you also need uh, to solve another uh, problem. Uh, you see, maybe a web page with high rank points to this web page, but it also points to a gazillion of other web pages. And then it becomes dubious how important that it also points uh, to you, to your web page is. What's the reason for that? Well, when people graduate, they apply for jobs, and if they did well in my class, they often ask me to give them a recommendation, right? Now, assume <coughs> that as nice person as I am, whoever asks me for a recommendation I give them high rank recommendation and uh, I have such a reputation so in all likelihood large number of people will ask me uh, for a recommendation, right? So I might have quote unquote high rank because I teach in a reputable institution or so they say and uh, um, uh, but I am too generous uh, so uh, then my recommendation will suffer from inflation, right? If I give uh, uh, my uh, trust to a large number of people, then it's not that hard uh, to get my recommendation. So the value of my re uh, recommendation should be lower. So what you would like to have for this web page rank is the following, that the rank, let's call it rho. So this is just some numerical uh, parameter, numerical quantity that uh, uh, supposedly measures how important a web page is. So, so it's just a real number. So ideally you would want to have a rank of each page to be uh, sum of the ranks of all web pages pi so that pi points to p. So this uh, notation we will use a lot. pi arrows p means uh, pi has an outgoing link pointing to page p. So you want to have the, uh, your rank to be some total of the ranks of web pages that point to your web page, but prorated with the number of outgoing links on that web page. So divided by, let's call, sharp uh, pi. So uh, what is uh, sharp? Pi is a uh, uh, number of outgoing uh, links uh, in uh, uh, Pi. 
right? So for example, if this uh, web page points all together at five other web pages, then uh, the, what it will be confirmed to be will be a rank of P1 divided by five and so forth, right? So you get only a fraction, equal fraction of the rank of uh, the web page, right? Depending on how many outgoing links it has, because you can then say that the trustworthiness of P1 uh, is distributed equally to all web pages that contain, uh, that, that uh, uh, have out uh, the, the P1 points. Right? So, are you with me so far? Huh? Right? Now, this is all nice and good, huh? but notice, even if this worked, this does not give you a method of computing the rank. Huh? Because in order to compute the rank of P, you need to know the ranks of all pages that point to P. But in order to compute the rank of PI, maybe P also points to PI, so it's a vicious circle, right? It's not a recipe how to evaluate ranks. So this is then not an explicit formula, but an implicit formula. It is a condition, so we might be looking for ranking a row that satisfies this condition, but how uh, we can obtain it, uh, this formula says nothing about that. Uh, right? Okay, so, but the question is, uh, how would you know in the first place that such a ranking exists? That, notice this is a system of linear equations, right? In terms of row of P, because it just says row of P is a linear combination of row of PI divided by this number. So it's a huge system of linear equations. How many equations? As many equations as you have web pages, right? So it's a gigantic hundreds of billions uh, of equations, right? But why would such a rank exist? How do we know that such a rank exists? And lo and behold, such rank, in fact, might not exist. So, but this is a good starting point. So what page rank does, uh, it tweaks this formula in a way that it guarantees the existence of such ranking function, right? And it allows reasonably fast computation of an approximation of such, uh, such a function rho, right? So you can see it's not really, it's, everything is kind of quite intuitive, just the, the trick is how to ensure that such ranking row, such a mapping from pages into ranks exists and that you can efficiently compute it given that you have to compute it for hundreds of billions of web pages. Okay, so that's the first intuition behind page rank. It should satisfy the rank of each web page is sum of all ranks of all web pages that point to it, prorated by how many outgoing links they have, or something very close to it, right, to such an equation, so that the intuition is preserved, but the existence and computability of such rank function is guaranteed. Right? Okay, so. This was uh, presumably the starting point of uh, people who, in fact, uh, Brim, uh, Brim and uh, uh, Page, right, who invented the Page rank. Um, so let us now 
try to come up uh, with different, uh, more heuristics about the page rank, right? Uh, and uh, allegedly, this was the way how you know, Brin and uh, uh, Page came up with the algorithm. And it's a really uh, beautiful idea. Um, and it says the following. Let's make a thought experiment. Uh, right? So this is the collection of all web pages with all possible outgoing links, and they probably loop and so forth, right? Uh, you can have these bots, right, that uh, go through the internet following the links and making a map, a huge Google map of internet uh, revealing what is the link structure of the web pages. Now imagine, um, an, an idle person who is bored to death. So what he does, uh, he visits, he picks a web page totally at random, okay? And then starts clicking on the links. Whenever he comes to a web page, he picks a link on that page, clicks on it, goes to the web page that uh, this link points at, and he keeps doing that for a very, very long time, right? He makes billions of clicks, right? And uh, Google, spying on all of us, uh, does the following. Uh, it keeps his surfing history and makes a table uh, of all the web pages in the web and it keeps a, a tally how many times uh, the, the person has visited uh, each web page. Uh, Right? So whenever you uh, go to a web page, Google increases the counter for this web page for one. Right? And if you surf for a gigantic number n, uh, the, the total number of clicks, they say a trillion of them. And then you look at the tab. What do you think, what will be in the important pages? Ones that were visited very frequently. Why is that so? Because in order to visit a web page many times, there must be many ways to get there. And not only that uh, there are many paths that lead to this web page, but these pages in these paths must be themselves important because otherwise the path will be followed very infrequently. Yes? Uh, but if you have a cycle, wouldn't it just keep a going inside the cycle? He chooses uh, a random a link to follow. So, okay, so that's a very good point. So the problem with uh, this model is, uh, what will he do if he reaches a PDF document that has no outgoing links, uh, or if uh, he reaches a cycle, right, that has one incoming edge and no outgoing edges, and then only he will get stuck in the cycle and he will get zeros essentially almost everywhere except gigantic numbers for all of the web pages within the site. So in order to make this model useful, we have to solve the problem of web pages that have incoming links but not outgoing links. 
sun. And these nodes in the graph of the web pages are called dangling nodes. So we have to decide if our misfortunate surfer reaches a web page that is a dangling node. Or does he do that then? Right? We also have to make sure that even if internet does have these vicious loops, the surfer never gets stuck there um, for good. And the idea how this is done is really colossal. Uh, and it's uh, the, the interesting part is uh, that uh, solving the dangling web pages and solving uh, this uh, uh, dead end cycles uh, will be precisely what will tweak this formula to guarantee existence of the unique page. Rank, right? So how is this? Uh, um, if you reach a dangling web page, what can you do to bail out? Back trace. You can go back, but that introduces horrible problem. What's the problem with going backwards? You have to keep track how you got there because otherwise you cannot back. Right? And this would make the algorithm impossible, intractable to analyze. So, so you want to make the surfing, surfing entirely memoryless, uh, which means I simply follow the link and I don't keep track how I got there. So what do you think? Uh, if I don't have recollection how I got there, what's the simplest way to get out of this? To simply, yes. Exactly. You simply randomly jump to another randomly chosen web page and you continue. So if you do that, the problems the problem of dangling web pages disappears. How do we solve this problem of vicious uh, cycles? Well, your server is a little bit impatient. So he keeps clicking on the links, but then he gets bored and jumps randomly to another web page. So at every step, when he is at a website, he has two options. One option is to pick a, a link on that web page and follow it with high probability, say 85%. And then with probability 15%, he can also jump to a totally random new web page and keep doing it, right? So whenever I go to a particular web page, uh, I, I can always have an option to just jump with small probability to jump anywhere to, on any other web page. Uh, or with much larger probability, I simply follow the link. So even if I get stuck in the loop, Eventually, I'll get impatient and uh, uh, I will continue surfing by uh, starting from a brand new point. So, right? Now, it turns out that these two fixes uh, make model correct. In what sense? You see, in order for the uh, ranks of the pages to make sense, it must be the case that no matter how I served, for as long as I follow this uh, uh, 
uh, rules of randomly, occasionally randomly jumping to an arbitrary website. The count, how many times I visited web page must be approximately the same, right? Because otherwise, if it depends on particular choice of random surfer, what's the value of uh, uh, ranks that depend, uh, uh, that do not depend on topology of the web, but on a particular choice of some nerve, right? And it turns out that if you solve this problem by occasional low probability random ju uh, jumps, then as you increase the number of uh, uh, clicks, these numbers uh, divided by n, so the fraction n of pi divided by n total will converge to a number that is completely independent on particular uh, history of the of the surfing. Okay, are you with me? Any, yes? Um, page rank, is that just getting the popularity of any page, any one page? Or like, you know, Google will have to look up something like pizza or something, and it'll go only page rank once with pizza. Okay, so, uh, so the question is, uh, when you search, uh, does the page rank, uh, you search for pizza, does the page rank depends, uh, that, that will do the sorting of the web pages, depend only, uh, will be calculated for web pages that contain pizza or all web pages? The answer is, it has to be for all web pages. Why is this so? Why do you think uh, that ranking should be uh, should be independent of the search terms. Otherwise, you can just make a whole bunch of pages with your own link over there. Uh, yeah, the, well, even uh, probably for any keyword, uh, there are many, many pages, also those that you don't control. But, yes? Uh, web pages that are independent of the keyword may point to the web pages that do have the keyword that you're looking for. That's exactly right. So. The uh, web, the importance of web pages comes from the structure of the link. So there might be web pages that do not have the keyword, but there is one extremely important feature uh, that prohibits uh, linking the uh, rank to the keyword. Because even if we did make it rel uh, relative to the keyword, the then this page rank has to be calculated on the fly for your particular search terms. But the number of web pages is humongous. So it will be absolutely infeasible to compute that, right? Now, so this page rank, when it started, it took about a week uh, of computational time of Google servers to evaluate it. Now I think uh, it takes much less, but probably uh, it's still on the order of magnitude of a day, maybe. So it's impossible to do it uh, uh, term specific, in, but you do it for the entire structure. <coughs> However, what you point out uh, is important. In what way? Well, why do I care if a web page about Tony Abbott points to Pizza Hut? Because I don't like what Tony Abbott, okay? I really don't, actually. So the point is this. It would be nice if we could make the page rank topic dependent. But we don't have computational resources to do that. So uh, of course, you know that Google 
was a Stanford student. Uh, these two guys were Stanford graduate students when they uh, discovered and implemented and started Google. Only several months after that, an another group of Stanford students did the following thing. Okay, it's impossible to make it dependent on particular search query. But you can sort out all the web pages on the web in loose categories that there are few of them, maybe a few hundred of categories. For example, web pages about sport, web pages about politics, web pages about food. And then um, compute the page rank by giving high weight only to the web pages that, uh, um, that are in the same category. Then when you get, and this has to be done by an automated system. So a robot, as uh, it visits the web pages, has to figure out what the web page is about. And that's darn difficult task because it involves essentially semantics. And our algorithms are pretty dumb when it comes to semantics, right? We rely on syntactical features. But they kind of hacked something that apparently did pretty good job in sorting out web pages. And then when a new query term comes, another automated algorithm has to figure out to what degree is this about sports? To what degree it's about food? So it has to assign to the search term a fraction uh, to what extent to each of these categories uh, uh, your keywords relate. And then combine these ranks uh, uh, that are specific for the group. So for example, if you, my search is 90% about sport, right, and 10% about money because it's about how much players are paid, then I will, uh, the uh, uh, Google rank of the pages will be calculated by taking 90% of the sport rank plus 10% of the finance rank and produce a topic dependent rank. And this exactly solves the problem because you have to run page rank only for a few, uh, I don't remember exactly, I should look it up. Uh, I'll do it for next time. Um, so um, what did they want to say? Uh, what's the number of categories? It was, I think of maybe a few dozen only. So rather coarse. Uh, you run page rank separately for each category, and then you easily combine the results uh, without having to run a gigantic algorithm by simply uh, computing the weighted average of the topic-specific ranks. Good. So with these two fixes, we can show that these uh, always converges to the same numbers no matter how you serve. But this still doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you how to compute it because it wouldn't be a very good idea to start an <coughs> automated robot and start you know, jumping through internet following links and then waiting for a hundred billion uh, search history to get the table. That would be useless. It would be, it would take the age of the universe, right? So you have to get these numbers reasonably fast. And uh, this reasonably fast means uh, within days, uh, because you have to uh, um, recompute the page rank every now and then because the structure of the internet keeps changing. Every day, huge number of new pages are added 
some of the pages disappear. So you have to keep updating your page run. Right? So it has to run with at most uh, <coughs> within at most few days uh, before it produces it. Regardless of the fact that there are hundreds of billions that the size of this uh, uh, system of equations uh, or the size of this table is a hundred, hundreds of billions, uh, right? So, uh, interestingly enough, uh, this is all possible to do and uh, using basic matrix algebra, right? We will show that uh, we can associate uh, with the links uh, structure of the web uh, a matrix. Well, it's kind of clear how, um, how this matrix can look like. If this is page PI, and here is page PJ. I can put here one if and only if. So M of I J is equal to one if and only if the I points to PJ. Right? So matrix representation of graphs is something natural. But we want to tweak this matrix somehow so that it reflects this, uh, you see, in, in essence. Uh, um, so you see, if PI points out to PJ uh, and say the cardinality of the set of all PKs such that uh, uh, PI points to PK, Right? If this is, uh, this is uh, sharp PK, then uh, probability to jump from PI to PJ will be simply 1 over uh, uh, sharp uh, PI, uh, PI. Right? So uh, it will be. So originally, probability is everywhere 0, except uh, it's 1 over sharp pi if uh, for the pj's uh, so that pi